I shoot photos all the time, as in almost every single day. I work in Lightroom or edit photos every single day. This is something I've been doing for over a year permanently. And last year when I made this video, I didn't think much of it. Yes, the iPhone 13 Pro was impressive. Yes, it had great dynamic range and there was a lot of great processing going on. But anytime I zoomed into the images, I was always just like, okay, we're still not quite there yet. Well, <laughs> that's different this year. Hey, welcome to my channel. I know many of you clicking on this have never seen me before, so let me give you a little bit of background. I live full-time in that forerunner behind me, traveling around, taking landscape photos, and making videos like this one. However, recently I started making daily videos about my travels all the way to the Arctic Ocean in Alaska, all through Alaska, and back down to Colorado, which is where I am now. I'm actually on the way to Argentina to hopefully raise awareness for mental health by making daily videos. So if you'd be into that, I highly recommend you check out a few of my other videos and subscribe based off of watching those, but don't feel pressured. And if you end up just liking this video, give it a like at the end of the video, that helps me out the most. All right, so now that you know a little bit of background about me, in today's video, we're gonna be comparing the Canon R5 and an EF adapted 16 to 35 millimeter F4 lens, the iPhone 14 Pro that I have right here. And in this video, all we're gonna be doing is shooting a few raw photos during sunrise and sunset in real world conditions. So this is not gonna be a scientific test. I'm not gonna be controlling the light, but what I am gonna be doing is waking up for sunrise, shooting some midday light, and even shooting a blue hour shot with my Canon R5 as if I'm out here taking portfolio worthy images in my travels here in the San Juan Mountains during the fall color change. Now I'm gonna be shooting in raw on both cameras, on both my R5 and the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. And all you really need to know about RAW is it's just gonna give us more data to work with and make the file sizes larger. If you really wanna deep dive, you can Google it or check out my video from last year where I go over a little bit more about what RAW is. Unlike last year, I'm only gonna be using the Apple Pro RAW that's built into the camera app instead of a third-party app. I think that's the most genuine. That's probably what most of you will do if you wanna take images like this. If you need to know how to enable that, just go to your settings, camera, Apple Pro RAW and make sure you select the 48 megapixel image that will give you the biggest images. However, it's also gonna give you the most detail. We're only gonna be testing the 24 millimeter lens, which is the one X lens on the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. That's basically the sensor that got the most upgrades and the wide angle and the telephoto got small upgrades, but not enough to warrant last year's test. And this year, I really just wanted to test that 48 megapixel sensor that they added to the iPhone 14 Pro. Also keep in mind that it's 24 millimeters rather than 28 millimeters like it was last year. So that's what I'll be shooting on my Canon R5 at 24 millimeters. I'm gonna show you exactly how I take each image during sunrise and sunset and blue hour and harsh conditions like this. And for each test, I'm gonna be editing the R5 image first, just like I would if I was trying to put it in my portfolio. And then I try to match the Apple iPhone 14 Pro to that image because that feels the most genuine. After each test, I'm gonna show you a camera A and a camera B, and you get to decide which one is the Apple iPhone 14 Pro, but keep in mind that it's not always gonna be the same camera. At the end of the video, I'll give you the answer to the question of which camera was A and B for every test, and you can even sit and watch how I edited the photos and break down pixel peeping into those RAW files, and I'm even gonna include the RAW files for you to download if you want to download them and mess with them yourself, just to see how much detail is in some of those images. So if that's something you're into, be sure to watch that part. But if you're not really into that, there'll be timestamps down below where you can just find out the answer of which camera was A or B for each test. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's jump into the first test of me shooting sunrise here in the San Juan Mountains. So in this first scene behind me comparing the R5 to the Apple iPhone 14 Pro, you can tell there's gonna be a lot of dynamics. There's a lot of shadow, a lot of direct light coming in. We've got some clear blue skies here. This is a typical sunrise shot. Maybe normally I wouldn't shoot this shot because of these clear blue skies, but for this test, it's gonna be a great challenge for the iPhone to see what its dynamic range is. And we can zoom into that 48 megapixel sensor. So let me get set up. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer until this light here hits this hill and covers more of these aspens. But we're getting pretty close, the light's getting harsher. So gotta get set up and uh, take some photos. What a beautiful morning.
between these cameras is that my R5 shoots in 2x3 and the iPhone shoots in 4x3, meaning when I go into edit, I'm gonna try to crop in my R5 just a little bit and crop in the iPhone just a little bit so that those framings match. There's no way to get them exactly. I try to include a little bit more sky and foreground at the bottom on the iPhone. That's gonna have to be cropped away just because it's a slightly more vertical image. But that's the only big caveat. I just took some shots here probably during the best light that we're gonna get this morning, and I also took a shot with the iPhone 13 Pro. And something new that I'm gonna do this year is I'm actually just gonna take a shot, not in RAW, with the iPhone, so that you have an idea of what it looks like with no processing, which I think is the most genuine, because a lot of people out there don't have the skills or are not gonna take the time to edit their RAW files, and they would love to just see what the iPhone takes with the snap of a button. So, I'm gonna do that, then probably just wait around a little bit, watch the sunrise, and enjoy the morning. And we're gonna have some more tests after this. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Absolutely gorgeous morning here in the San Juan Mountains. And uh, it's amazing to just wake up uh, right there. <laughs>
we've got another difficult test for the iPhone 14 Pro this morning, shooting at another famous spot here in the San Juans. We've got the Crystal Lake here, a little bit of movement, some fog. We've got a lot of light coming up on the peaks. Huge dynamic range to capture on both the R5 and the iPhone 14 Pro. I also took a shot with the 13 Pro, so I'll be able to compare all of those together, and a shot not in RAW on the 14 Pro. So here are those shots. Can you guess which one is the iPhone 14 Pro? Which one is the R5? If you fell from grace, where does that leave you? And how do I please you? If I live to serve, there's an angel on my shoulder. So for this test, I wanted to change things up a little bit. Instead of taking a big landscape, I wanted to get a little more intimate, even on the 24 millimeter side. I am trying to cut the sky out of the shot just because it's blue, and I really just want to get the forest floor and the trees in the shot. What it's really going to test is if you notice, there's still a huge amount of dynamic range. There's a lot of shadows, and the sun causes a lot of highlights on the reflections of the aspen trees here and also on the foliage down here. Something else that I want to test is that when you shoot in RAW on the iPhone, it's actually taking multiple photos and combining those together to give you a higher dynamic range. And because there's a little bit of movement on these ferns because of the wind, I wanted to see how much movement you can actually see in the final image. I also wanted to test a little bit of the distortion of that 24 millimeter lens. And because I'm shooting down, we got trees all in the top half of the frame, and we're gonna be able to see just how much distortion is there. I doubt there's very much because a lot of that can be fixed in processing, which Apple is probably already doing, but I wanted to test it anyways. So, as you can tell, a lot of side light, a lot of shadow, Still a very difficult image, but this is a very realistic image if you're just driving along the road here, trying to capture some aspen trees in the fall color, or just trying to capture a beautiful moment. So here are those photos. Can you guess which one is the R5? And can you guess which one is the Apple iPhone 14 Pro? I would walk a fine God, is that Mark Denny? What's going on, buddy? I follow you on OnlyFans. OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome to my aunt's house. I'm clearly not in the forerunner, and I just wanted to start off by saying, if you just want the answers to which camera was which, there's going to be a comment pinned down below the like button where you can just check out those answers. But I highly recommend you just stick around for a little bit so that I can explain why I titled this the way I titled it. I'm just going to give you some background. So I shoot photos all the time, as in almost every single day. I work in Lightroom or edit photos every single day. This is something I've been doing for over a year permanently. And last year when I made this video, I didn't think much of it. Yes, the iPhone 13 Pro was impressive. Yes, it had great dynamic range and there was a lot of great processing going on. But anytime I zoomed into the images, I was always just like, okay, we're still not quite there yet. Well, <laughs> that's different this year. And I didn't know that when I started making this video. So. I actually planned on titling this video just $5,000 camera versus iPhone 14 Pro, just like I did last year. However, after editing these images, 
I changed my mind and I said, these images are good enough for me to put in my portfolio. These images are good enough to print. And if you're interested in that, I will be printing one of the photos from this comparison, just like I did earlier this year that you can check out here to just see how large we can print these photos. Okay, so enough of me just talking. Let's actually look at the photos. Okay, so the first one, the camera A was the iPhone 14 Pro. That is this image. And this is the Canon R5 image. Now, let's zoom in. Let me go to my library module. We're gonna go to our comparison. And then I'm gonna zoom in. And you can see at the top of the titles, Canon R5, iPhone 14 Pro on the right. This is at, let me remind you, 200%. On the left, Canon R5. On the right, iPhone 14 Pro. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I'm zooming into 200%. And, that, and this is pixel peeping at its finest. And most of the time, pixel peeping for me is pointless. But it does matter when one, you're trying to look at details. And two, you want to print large. So a lot of the times you're limited by the size you can print based off the megapixels of your camera. But once you reach a certain equilibrium, you can actually just print pretty large no matter what the megapixel is. I've usually equated that to about 20 to 26 megapixels. So if your camera is at that, you can enhance it and enlarge it using software and print pretty much any size you want. However, the more detail you have, the better it's to work with. And I am just blown away by the detail in the iPhone shot. I mean, just, it's not gonna come through fully on YouTube, but that's why I'm gonna have some of these raw files downloadable for you if you wanna check them out. Okay, so that's photo number one. All right, so next let's talk about that blue hour shot. And this is the hardest image for the iPhone 14 Pro. If you guessed that the iPhone 14 Pro was camera B, then you would be correct. And the reason it's the most difficult is because usually low light is the hardest for smaller sensors. Even on professional cameras that are micro four thirds or APS-C, the smaller your sensor, so physical size, the less light it can actually capture for the same scene. That's usually the hardest part about these small sensors is shooting at lower light. So this is the toughest image for the iPhone 14 Pro throughout this entire test, and I think it did really, really well. So we're gonna zoom in, and you're gonna notice that the details aren't nearly as crisp as the last image, but they're still really good. So on the left, R5. On the right, iPhone 14 Pro at 200%. And you can really pay attention to the detail in the trees here, in the shadows, and you are gonna see that it is lacking a little bit of detail. But if we go up here to the mountain, there's still a ton of detail in the mountain, and there's still a ton of detail in the back here. The R5 is definitely a better sensor. It is definitely a better camera. I'm not arguing that. What I am arguing is if I was in this moment and something really amazing was happening, and I took out just my phone because I didn't have my camera, and I snapped this shot, it would be good enough to put in my portfolio. It would be good enough to put on my print page, which by the way, link down below if you wanna check out some of my prints. That says a lot to me because I'm very much a detail-oriented person and I always strive for the best possible quality I can get with what I have. And I never wanna sell a product or do anything to someone or sell it to someone that I'm not proud of. And I can 100% legitimately say that if I took this with my phone, edited it and put it in my portfolio and sold it to you, I would be happy with it. And I cannot say that about the iPhone 13 Pro or anything before doing this test. And that's entirely why I ended up changing the title of this video and my scope of why I wanted to talk about these edits. We're gonna to get to the iPhone 13 Pro at the end and I'll also show you a few of the images that are taken straight out of camera for the iPhone 14 Pro. So this is, let's go to the non-candidate view. This is straight out of camera, 12 megapixel, no raw. This is what you would capture if you just snap the shutter of your camera when you were there without shooting in RAW or doing any edits. Completely different image. I don't even consider this really, this is just a snapshot image. It's got a ton of processing going on. But remember that this image is the same as this image taken by the same camera. One is just taken in RAW, 48 megapixels. The other one is just the HEIC, which is kind of like a JPEG processed. So I hope that tells you the answer for all those people that are gonna end up asking in the comments, what does it look like? Just no editing, no raw or anything like that. It is a night and day difference, but I also wouldn't shoot JPEG on my professional camera and not edit my photos either. 
Okay, let's move on to the next sunrise shot. And if you guessed that camera A was the iPhone 14 Pro, then you would have gotten it right. So on the left is the R5 as usual, on the right is the Canon iPhone 14 Pro. And because of the way this image was in terms of blue skies and just not a lot of light going on that I really enjoyed, I actually edited this image differently than how I would normally edit an image. As you can tell, it's definitely got some raised blacks. It's got like a film look. The colors are pushed a little bit weird. And I did that because not only was it an artistic choice, I also realized that people are going to edit differently than how I edit. And everyone's going to take their images and possibly do different things to it. So I kind of wanted to use this image as a, here's a different way to edit and how far can we push the iPhone in that way. So for example, when you look at the R5 image, let's just zoom into 100% instead of 200% here. Like I said, you're going to get a lot of those cooler tones. It's definitely got some muted saturation and we've got some blue banding here on the top and the bottom that is more of an artistic choice than anything else. Now, if we compare it to the iPhone image, let's go to 200% zoom here. You're going to see that obviously the detail in the R5 is a little bit stronger. This was a, I would say, lower light test, especially in all these shadows, considering all of the light was on the mountains up here. So the dynamic range in the scene was really, really high. But again, I zoom in, I get the detail out of the iPhone image, and it's still pretty good. In this particular image, not as strong as that first image, which we had a lot of light on the part of the scene, but it's still good enough. And I think this is one of those things where when I work with the iPhone a little bit more, I probably will learn its strengths and weaknesses. Also, if you want to see the iPhone 13 Pro, let's compare that to the 14 Pro. So on the left is the 14 Pro, on the right is the 13 Pro, and I just copy and pasted the edit and then decreases exposure for the iPhone 13 Pro. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but you're going to get an idea of the difference of detail here. One thing that really sticks out in these images to me is if we just go to 100% zoom and get a realistic look at what we're actually getting, we're getting way more detail out of that iPhone 14 Pro image, and you're going to see a lot more detail up here in the mountain because I would have to zoom into 200% on the iPhone 13 Pro to represent what 100% on the iPhone 14 Pro is. And I can't necessarily do that in the comparison view here in Lightroom. But I think you get an idea of how good that iPhone 14 Pro image is compared to last year. And also just for comparison's sake, this is the image out of camera that I didn't process anything. This is the HEIC that you would take without taking a RAW or editing it in Lightroom. Okay, the last image. Let's take a look at this one. This was the hardest to edit, mostly because of the highlights and the shadows. And I'm actually gonna talk about a little bit about editing the iPhone 14 Pro right after this. If you guessed that camera B was the iPhone 14 Pro for this, you would have guessed correct. One thing that kind of gives us away that I messed up is because I'm so close to the subject as compared to the rest of the images, uh, that distance of the iPhone being higher than my Canon R5 really gives away which camera was which if you guessed it based off of that. But in terms of the detail, something that you're gonna be surprised of is let's zoom in to the details here. So again, on the left is the R5, on the right is the 14 Pro, and just look at the detail in all of these areas. And even remember how I mentioned that there was movement on the, those ferns? If you look at the Canon R5 image, it's actually blurry here in the foreground, whereas on the iPhone image, it is not. More is in focus. This has to do with the fact that I didn't shoot at F16, I shot at F8, and I focused a little bit farther in the distance, so that stuff in the foreground is actually a little bit blurry. And even if I go here in the corners, you can actually tell the iPhone 14 Pro image is sharper. It, just look at your screen. Again, it's gonna come through on YouTube a little bit degraded, but let's just go right here. I think this is the, this is, this is the, I guess the, uh, the magic. And when I check out the detail in the wood here, and I check out the detail and the highlights on all of the ferns, I, I mean, which of these images would you care to print? Again, blurry in the foreground here. Let's go to the background. Let's check out some of the details in the trees back here. And you're gonna notice the highlights are actually a little brighter on the R5. That could just be because of my edit. Again, I did push these images pretty far and I always edited the R5 image first. But just look at the detail that's in the image for the iPhone 14 Pro. It did an amazing job, in my opinion, of capturing all of the details that are on that forest floor all of the little details on the aspen trees here. I'm, again, completely blown away. Now, again, this is also a brighter image, so this is a moment that has a lot more light for that iPhone 14 Pro to take in. It's not a blue hour shot, and it's not a high dynamic range 
pre-sunrise shot like the one before but man does it capture the detail really well i mean just uh, again i i don't I'm, I'm at a loss for words of how good some of these images are from the iphone 14 pro so here is the straight out of camera iphone 14 pro image with no raw editing or just 12 megapixels heic you can get an idea of the processing that happens for apple uh, not a fan of it, but that is why we have the raw option. Again, this is the same camera as this. Completely different image. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about and say that if you ever go to edit your own iPhone images is that I actually edited two of these images using... Let's go in here. I edited two of these images using the Apple Pro Raw profile. And I found that recovering the shadows in the way that was handling highlights wasn't as good to match to my R5 as just using the built-in profile, the Apple embedded co color profile that happens as soon as you import into Lightroom. And I actually found this out by mistake. So I did those two images. I used the Apple Pro Raw, which is what I normally do. And then when I went to edit this image, I forgot to switch the color profile. And I actually ended up editing the entire image using the Apple embedded color profile that you can see in Lightroom here. And I started to think, oh, this was easier to match to the R5 with some of the shadows and stuff like that. And it was this image that I went back and re-edited. So if I open this one up, this is using the Apple Pro Raw profile. And you're gonna notice, like if I zoom in here and I go to my library, let's get comparison view up. On the left is the embedded profile and on the right is the Apple Pro Raw. You're gonna notice right here on the tree, look at the way it handles some of the highlights and colors on the tree on the left and look at how it handles on the right. Now, I'm not necessarily saying one of these is easier to edit than the other, but when I was trying to match my iPhone 14 Pro to my Canon R5, I had an easier time using the embedded profile rather than switching it over here to Pro Raw. Now, as soon as I switch it, it's gonna get too bright, I think. So if I switch over to Apple Pro Raw, it's gonna be completely blown out and I gotta bring the exposure down. But it just feels like I lose detail. The other thing you're gonna notice is that if I switch it to Pro Raw, I cannot switch it back to that embedded profile. So just remember that you can always copy that profile from another image if you accidentally do it. And if you're editing your own iPhone images, I just had an easier time with the embedded color profile. Not entirely sure what's up with that. I don't know if that's a Lightroom thing or an Apple thing, or maybe I need to update. One other thing to mention that it's gonna be difficult for you to edit your own iPhone images or the challenge that I had is always in the shadows. So really quick, let's take a look at these two particular images. So this is the R5 image you can see in the top left. And I'm gonna zoom into the shadows down here. And there's a decent amount of detail here in the shadows. And if I zoom down here in the Apple image, it's going to be darker. The problem is to get my contrast correct. So to get my contrast in the entire scene to look correct compared to the R5, I'm bringing up the shadows to try to recover some of those details, but it's also bringing up the shadows in some areas that I don't want to. And that was definitely the most challenging thing about editing all of these is that it just seems that Apple compresses the shadows a little bit more. If you look over here in the histogram, you can notice that everything is to the left. And if I open up the R5 image, it's got it's just right off of that that black area, meaning I get a little bit more contrast from the blacks to the shadows. And that was definitely something that was difficult to do these edits. All right, so I hope that was informative and genuinely, I don't use hyperbole lightly. Many of you might comment that this was clickbait, but I, I legitimately mean that I could take these images and put them in my portfolio if I hadn't had my R5 with me. That says a lot. And like I said before, I will be doing a print test for these. I'm really excited to do so. Unlike last year where I was just curious how far I could push it, but I knew that the details weren't all there. This year, I'm I'm really curious how large we can print to start to notice a degradation in quality of that iPhone 14 Pro sensor. So if you'd be into that, make sure you subscribe down below. And as always, if you like this video, you can give it a like. And I'll see you again next time. There's got to be a rainbow out there somewhere. We just got to go find it. Later. And I would walk the fine line Just to know